WatchGuard's Daily Security Byte RSA Edition. I'm Corey, and this is Mark LaLiberty. And we're happy to join you again from our second day at RSA, where uh, we're hanging out in our booth. It's in the South Hall at uh, 923. And we're also going to a number of talks. Uh, so why don't we jump in and talk about them? I think I'll go ahead and start, because sure, I'm, I'm just a pushy guy. Uh, so I actually started watching a lot of the keynotes this morning. There's a number of them from like the, the CEO of Cisco. But the one I really liked was a panel with three security researchers on like the five most top dangerous attacks. And it was kind of sponsored by the SANS Institute. So it was folks like Saint James Lynn, who's like the uh, European Director of Research for SANS, uh, people like Johannes Ulrich, and one other guy as well. So very interesting. And they basically covered five really high level attacks. I won't go into all the detail, but one of them is something we've talked about before, issues in code repositories and, and software buckets, mm -hmm. uh, specifically S3 buckets, GitHub, things like that. It's a major issue. Absolutely, we've certainly seen that before. One was kind of hardware security vulnerabilities, which are starting to pick up with Spectre and Meltdown. They talked about attacks against industrial control systems, uh, which was interesting as well, and a few others, but really those were the high level themes. You know, I was very interested, of course, in the software repositories and that kind of supply chain hack that we've seen a lot and of course the industrial control systems you know there's a lot of critical infrastructure that depends on the internet so that was definitely interesting a lot of cool takeaways we might share when we have more time cool so I actually went to a, after talking yesterday about the cryptographers panel I went to a talk today it was actually two separate presentations in a single block all about uh, hashing and signature algorithms yeah. in a post quantum cryptography world yeah. so as we said yesterday, most hashing and signature algorithms rely on uh, algorithms that are easy to do in one way, but really difficult to undo. Yeah. Uh, invert is the uh, technical term for it. Oh. So they, they went over a few new algorithms and ways to make them uh, more usable in a post-quantum yeah. cryptography world where computers are capable of doing this math really easily. Yeah. Uh, some of the drawbacks of these new algorithms are the key size. They're yeah. much larger keys because they need to be resistant to certain attacks. Yeah, and even the size of the key can be, I mean, cryptography to be fast and easy, like exactly. a one kilobyte key is good, but once you get to 10 or 100, that itself can slow down. And they were so. talking about keys on the orders of megabytes. Oh, wow. And so trying to find ways to reduce those. And they gave a few novel examples of uh, ways to solve this. It's actually really interesting. Uh, on top of that, I wandered around the floor for a bit today and actually stumbled across uh, the NSA is here, along with many of the other three-letter agencies. Well, FBI is here. <laughs> uh, my favorite bit, though, is they actually had a authentic Enigma machine, which, yeah, if you're not familiar with, uh, was used to encrypt uh, Nazi Germany communications during World War II. So it's really um, exactly yeah. fascinating machine. And they had one in person there, and it was really cool to see something that I've always wanted to. Yeah, it's a wooden person. box, right? I think yeah, it's a little wooden box. Wood. It's it kind of like a typewriter. Type yeah. yeah, it was a cool machine for sure. It was. Well, that sounds fun. Uh, I ended today. There's a couple keynotes at the end, and of course, Monica Lewinsky's here, which mm -hmm. you got to go see that. And she was speaking on the power of shame in the digital age with the internet. And actually, it was a very interesting topic. Obviously, like uh, when her scandal broke which she takes you know, ownership for and admits it's something that she regrets, that was right when there's a 24 seven news cycle and there were gossip websites with comments. So she was really one of the early people that, you know, mom mentality on the internet, I think we've seen it nowadays. You know, there's other cases like there's a, you know, a homosexual gentleman that his roommate caught him on webcam being intimate with another guy, published it online and he committed suicide. So she really talks about how shame has changed. And to me, it really made you think about privacy. We talk about privacy all the time in the context of just personal security. And like the reason we don't believe governments should have backdoors to encryption isn't because we're criminals, but it's because privacy is important. Uh, one of the things she said that I thought was fascinating was information is not knowledge. You know, information, which we have a ton of on the internet out of context without showing the full of who a person is or a situation is, uh, is, is not really that full person. Mm -hmm. So it does make you think. I mean, we love this technology. It connects us. It makes business great. You and I are both technologists that want to yes. see it grow. But realizing the danger really is why we do security and really is why we believe in privacy. So it was a fascinating and interesting talk for sure. It really does seem interesting. 
Yeah, yeah. So that was the second day of RSA. We hope to do a couple more of these, including one of the most important is talking about Mark's talk on some of the, the attack surface in, or potential attack surface and attacks on Ethereum, which I think is going to be awesome. Yep, I'm looking forward to it on Friday. Cool. Well, that's it for today's RSA news. Thanks for watching. See you around.